Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to talk about programming. Service mode, ops mode, what's the difference? Let's take a look at the pros and cons of each. Stick around and we'll get started. You can use either a programming throttle like this one here, a Digitrex uh, 500D, or you can use uh, a program like Decoder Pro to do your programming, and you can use both service mode and ops mode and it, with each of these, okay? It's not limited to um, throttles. One is not limited to throttles and the other is limited to computers. You can use both uh, with that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to go over though is um, with service mode programming, you do need an isolated programming track because it just sends commands to the track and any decoder on that piece of, of track is going to be reprogrammed. So if you hooked it up to your layout and started uh, giving commands, then you could reprogram all the locomotives or decoders on your layout. So that's why in a previous video I showed how to set up switches so that you could switch back and forth between uh, programming and operations on your on your layout. Now, service mode programming is the most common version uh, available. It's uh, available on all command stations that I'm aware of. And I think today probably uh, ops mode is as well. Now with ops mode, ops mode is done on the main, uh, on the main line and so you know, it's not limited to, to having a separate track for it. You can do your programming right there on the main without any problems. Um, it is a quick and easy way to change just a few CVs. Now, why do I say it's a, that limitation? Well, when you get into programming uh, pro, uh, decoders like Loksound decoders and TCS decoders that have very complex uh, indexing schemes, then you need a way to be able to uh, use iField Decoder Pro. Now you can use uh, um, you can use your handheld throttles to do your programming like that, but you know it, it does take quite a bit because you know it, for each command for each CV change that you want to make, you have to enter a bunch of other several others uh, in advance in order to tell it where to go. So it's sort of like saying go to room 5 and uh, and open the door and then uh, find file cabinet 6 and then go down to drawer 3 and pick out file labeled ABC and uh, on the third page change this. So it's, it, it gets that complicated and for each setting that you want to change you have to do that. And so it's much, much easier if a command uh, is being sent by a program like Decoder Pro because it can do it without any, you know, without thinking about it. And it's repetitious and uh, it's built in to their programming. So it's just a lot easier that way. Okay, so let's take a look at the pros and cons of each. Uh, first, service mode. Okay, with service mode, you have a separate isolated programming track. And that programming track can be um, on your workbench, it can be uh, a track in your yard, you know, it can be a, an industrial spur somewhere, just somewhere where the, that you have designated to be used for programming. And you can drive a locomotive onto that track, you can throw a switch uh, to, to programming and do your programming, throw a switch back and drive off again. And that's a very convenient way to do it because, you know, once you've completed a locomotive and put it on your layout, you don't want to be handling it a lot, and mess up your weathering and, your, your, and, and, and the like. So uh, it's better to just set something up like that. Um, also, the programming track, the service mode track, is current limited by design to 250 milliamps. Now the reason for that is it's not out of the realm of possibility for you to install a decoder and get a wire backwards, okay, and end up with a short circuit uh, um, it built into the installation. And when you put that on the programming track, if it's limited to 250 milliamps, then it's highly unlikely that that's going to be enough power to burn up your decoder. You're just going to get an error when you try to do the programming. So that's why it's so, it's so important when you're, use, when you're doing your initial programming after first installing a decoder, 
always try it out on the service mode track because it's limited to 250 milliamps and you're unlikely to blow the decoder. Once you've tried it, once you've uh, changed the address, let's say, then you can go ahead and start moving it on to the uh, ops mode if you want. Um, the other thing that is critical uh, importance about service mode is that with service mode programming, you can both write to a decoder and read the settings in the CVs on that decoder. Now that's important. Let's say if you wanted to uh, change the volume of the prime mover and you don't remember off the top of your head what you set it at uh, when you set that decoder up. Well, how do you find out what that setting is? Well, if it's on the service mode track, you can just read the value back from the setting, from the decoder, and then you can proceed to increase or decrease the, uh, the value of, for, uh, for that CV to get the sound you want. Uh, if you're using ops mode, you, there's no way to read back without certain specialized equipment being installed on your layout. Uh, there's no way to read what the values in a CV are when you're using ops mode programming. So you'll be, uh, de you'll be uh, programming that decoder blind. So you'll have to start, you know, and you might have to set the, the sound at 100, and then if that's not good enough, then increase or decrease it. So it doesn't, you know, it, it changes it a little bit, makes it a little bit more complex to, uh, to go about doing it that way. Some of the cons uh, associated with service mode programming. Uh, if you put more than one uh, uh, decoder-equipped locomotive on the service mode track, uh, it will program all uh, decoders on that track. Okay, that's it, it's just like a broadcast type uh, approach. Uh, all decoders are programmed uh, on the service mode track, no matter what their address is. So that's one thing to be aware of. Uh, but it does allow you to do that. I mean, you can put two decoder-equipped locomotives on the track and program both of them at the same time. Uh, I don't, you know, there's not that many cases where you might want to do that, but you can. The other factor involved is that limit, the uh, limited current and sometimes the voltage can be a problem when it comes to programming. And uh, Soundtracks found this out quite early when they started releasing their uh, sound decoders, and they found that uh, programming could be very unreliable. And the reason for that is because the capacitors in the decoder circuit, the sound circuit, um, can be very power hungry. And because of that, when you send a command at a very low power with a low, uh, with low current uh, uh, availability, then it's possible that those commands don't get through to the decoder. And to counter that, uh, both uh, DCC specialties and uh, soundtracks came up with specialized circuit boards. It's called the, the DCC specialties version. It's called a power packs. And the uh, soundtracks version is the PTB100. And what those do is that they mainly uh, boost the programming track power and uh, allow those uh, decoders with sound in particular to be programmed uh, even though uh, there's, you know, the de the command station isn't putting out quite enough, so that's the 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 easiest way to get around that. Um, these programming track boosters, and by the way, that's what PTB 100. That means programming track booster 100, and and that's literally what they do. They boost power to the track. Now over time, uh, various people have experimented and found that by increasing the voltage uh, being supplied to a, uh, a programming device like the PR3, the Digitrux PR3, that they could increase the uh, reliability of programming. Still, uh, that is a limitation of service mode programming, particularly if you use a very long wire between your command station and the programming track. So, as with all things DCC wiring, anytime you're going to run a wire, make sure that it's heavy enough to carry the current and that it's fairly short because, you know, long thin wires uh, will result in loss of voltage and current. So avoid that whenever you can. The other uh, uh, con associated with that is that um, the separate programming track is required. So you have to go about setting up a separate programming track, whereas with uh, ops mode programming you won't. Um, 
but again, you know, I, I said that it, it, it actually that's sort of a positive thing because of the way that service mode works. You absolutely do need it. And, you know, it, it works to your advantage to have it. Okay, let's talk about ops mode. So ops mode is done on the main line. Okay, it's operating at the full voltage and current available uh, from your booster because track power is on while you're doing the programming. So the some of the uh, pros of uh, of that are that it you know it is done on the main line so uh, you can do it at any point in time that you want uh, you can you know stop in a, a in any location while you're running a train and change the momentum uh, change the volume anything you want to do you can do it right there on the main program on the main line while you're running your train the other thing about it is unlike service mode which is you know, it doesn't matter what the address of the decoder is. Um, with ops mode programming, the programming commands are only sent to or only acted on by the decoder with the address that you're working with. Okay, so you're actually addressing it to uh, sending the, the CV command to the decoder and a specific decoder is chosen, okay, based on its address. And only those decoders with that address will respond. So you could have an AB unit, for example, uh, operating with the same address, and you could program both of them at the same time on ops mode, just like you can on a uh, service mode track. But uh, for the most part, you don't want to do that. You're going to be programming to individual decoder addresses. Now, as I said a second ago, uh, on the ops mode track, you're operating with the full voltage and the amperage of your command station. And, you know, the good thing about that is that you're going to get a very reliable programming command uh, reaching that decoder because it's going to blast past your, uh, uh, your, your sound capacitors and, and your keep alives and all those kind of things. So you generally will not have problems uh, programming with ops mode, uh, even if you've got a, uh, uh, um, a keep alive installed in your locomotive along with your decoder. So those capacitors are not going to overtax the programming commands. Also, because of that, uh, the, it, it's a very reliable way to program your decoders because you do have that higher voltage and that higher amperage to push through uh, and, and get past those uh, power-hungry capacitors in your sound decoders and in your Keep Alive circuits. Now, what are some of the cons associated with it? Well, um, on the opposite side there, uh, the, one of the cons is that you're operating with full voltage and full current. If you take a newly uh, decoder-equipped locomotive that you've just installed a decoder in, and you put it on the main line, and you've got a short circuit, you can have, say, 14 volts at up to 5 amps blasting into that decoder uh, with that short circuit. And that is going to cook it, okay? So that's why the first thing I always do when I do a new installation, I put it on the service mode track, check it to make sure that there are no problems. Now, that's not too much of a problem these days because most decoders now have some way of warning you if there is a short circuit. You know, for example, on the Soundtracks decoders, they have a little LED uh, built onto the board that will flash if you have, or come on. I can't remember now if it flashes or if it just comes on full brightness, but it does light up uh, if you have a short circuit. So, you know, there's less and less of a problem that you're going to blow one, but it's always a potential for you to do that. So be aware of that and um, don't try out a new install by putting it on the main line and seeing if it will run. Because probably what you might do is go ahead and let the smoke out and that'll be the end of that decoder. The other drawback for ops mode programming, like I said earlier, is you cannot read the CV settings uh, in the decoder as they are. All you can do is experiment with new settings. So you have to try one first and then to find out where you are and then go from there. Okay, so that's a wrap on DCC 101 programming ops mode versus service mode. So give it a try on your layout this week. And if you have any questions or comments, you know where to put them. Have a good week and we'll see you on Friday with another video. Bye now.